In this video we will be talking about aerial perspective. It's also called atmospheric perspective because you're looking through the air or looking through the atmosphere to something in the distance. There are two rules to follow an aerial perspective whether you're drawing, whether it's watercolor or oil. The first rule is all colors except white appear cooler or more blue as they recede or get further away from your eye. White tends to get a little bit warmer. The second rule is all colors appear higher in value or they get lighter as they recede or get further away from your eye. Now there's an exception to these rules. When you're looking at a sunset or a sunrise, the colors appear warmer. In other words, they look more red or more yellow as they move closer to the sun. However, the colors still get higher in value as they recede from your eye. So the obvious question is, why does this happen? The atmosphere, or the air, has tiny water droplets in it. That's what we refer to as gases. Little tiny water droplets, helium droplets, hydrogen droplets. This photo of a foggy morning is a good illustration of the water droplets that are in the air. Normally, on a warm day, we can't see these, but they're still there. In this photo, they're concentrated because it's a very moist morning. And now imagine that you're looking through a shower curtain and that shower curtain represents one layer of these water droplets. So if you're looking through one shower curtain or one layer of water droplets, everything looks pretty clear on the other side. But as you get more and more shower curtains or more and more water droplets, you're looking through a thicker mass of objects. Now the water droplets are made of water and so they have a bluish tint to them. As the distance increases, you look through more and more and more of these layers. Eventually, you're looking through thousands or millions of these water droplets, so objects in the distance start appearing bluer and bluer and bluer. And at the same time, their value increases. In other words, they get lighter and lighter and lighter as they move toward the horizon or move into the distance. So when we look at this photo, we can see this phenomenon taking place. Let's assume we're looking 20 miles into the distance to this mountain. These trees are also growing on this mountain, this mountain, and even this mountain in the distance. And yet they're all different values and they're all bluer as they recede into the distance. So let's turn our value scale on. If you're not familiar with this value scale, Look at our values video and it will explain values and how this value scale works. So let's take a look at the values in this image just to prove our point. So what's the value in the sky here? Now what you do is look through the hole, blur your eyes, and you'll be able to see which value matches the sky the best. You can see that number one is too bright, number three is too dark, and number two is a perfect match. So we'll mark that as a number two on the value scale. Now let's see what value this distant mountain is. We'll move our value scale up and down until we find a good match. Remember, blur your eyes and you can see that number three is lighter and number five is darker. But number four, when you blur your eyes, almost disappears. Now let's look at this mountain. We'll move our value scale up and down. You can see that number five is too light and number seven is too dark. When you blur your eyes, number six just about blends in. So we'll mark that as a number six. Now let's check this value as we get closer and closer to our observation point. Number seven is too light. Number nine is too dark. It looks like just about a number eight when you blur your eyes. Remember, look through the hole. Now let's check the closest value to us, which is the trees that are right in front of us. Number eight is too bright. Number 10 is too dark. Number nine is a perfect match. So we'll mark that. So you can see that we have almost every value on the value scale, starting with number nine all the way to number two by simply looking into the distance of this photograph. Now the next thing I wanna point out is 
The first colors to drop out of the landscape as you look into the distance are the yellow colors. In other words, if you remove the yellow colors from the foreground mountains, what you have left is red and blue. So the middle mountains are a combination of just red and blue. There's no yellow in them. As you look further into the distance, the red drops out. So the far mountains have very little or no red in them. And if there were mountains even further in the distance, they would be even bluer and higher in value. You begin with a combination of yellow, red, and blue colors. But as you look further into the distance, the yellow drops out first, then the red drops out, until finally you only have blue mountains in the far distance. Now you heard me say earlier that white tends to get a bit warmer. This is a good example of it. You can see in the sky right above the distant mountains, this cloud area is warmer. You can see that it's a little bit on the pink or red side, which means it's warm. You can see how we start out with blue in the middle distant mountains, it gets higher in value and bluer, and then it steps back to higher in value and bluer, and then finally in the sky where it's white, it's warmed up a little bit. And that's because blue is surrounding this white color and it appears to be warmer. I also want to point out this spot right here. See how in this even short distance, the ground in the foreground and the ground on this hill back here is exactly the same ground. But look how even in this short distance between this foreground and this middle hill back here, the middle hill is bluer, it's higher in value, there's less contrast, and we're also missing our yellow. The yellow starts dropping out. There's grass growing on that hill, but the yellow of the grass is already dropping out, even in this short distance. Now let's talk about the exception. Remember I was saying that when you're looking at a sunset or a sunrise, as you look into the distance, it actually gets warmer, not cooler. We start out very blue up here at the beginning of this foreground. As we work our way back toward the sunset, the sky gets warmer and warmer and warmer. Now the value continues to go up. In other words, it gets lighter and lighter. It also gets warmer and warmer. So that's the exception when you're looking into the sun. So now let's see how someone treats this who is a plein air painter. You can see the foreground has the darkest values and the most contrast. The middle ground is a bit bluer and a bit higher in value. And the background or the mountains in the distance are mostly blue with a small amount of red in them. The sky, of course, has the highest value because it's the source of light. So I hope this helps you understand aerial perspective, and thanks for watching.